Central Park Wigan welcomes a much changed but much younger Great Britain side looking to equalise the Dominion Insurance Test Series after their disastrous start at all in the first test. There's a huge crowd here to see Great Britain who have ten changes, a record equaling number with only wing Des Drummond at number two and props Jeff Grayson at eight and Trevor Skerritt at ten retained. That half-back partnership of six and seven of John Holmes and Ken Kelly have been brought in specially to try to get the passes out of the reach of these tough tackling Australian forwards. <clears throat> and there we have the two men who've been wanting those passes on our left, Des Drummond of Lee and Henderson Gill on the number five on the right hand side. These have the pace to trouble the kangaroos. Des number two is the quicker, using his change of pace to good effect, but Henderson at number five is the stronger, and he's not afraid to run through his opponents. Max Krillich, the Australian captain, leads out the same 13 as the first test. They're obviously well satisfied with second row man Les Boyd is propping at number 10. But an interesting selection for me is the substitute Ray Brown, reserve hooker, and there has been some doubt about number 9 captain Max Krillich. He's been under treatment since the first test, and we could see a problem there for this Australian side. The referee, Monsieur Roscagnier, has flown all the way He had a very good game in the first test at Boothbury Park Hall and he's rightly been retained for the second Dominion Insurance test. Steve Rogers, the Australian centre, in that green and gold jersey to kick off from the right of the screens. And Great Britain is to receive from the left of our screens in white jersey and red and blue stripe. Keith Mumby, new selection at number one from Bradford Northern tentatively bringing the ball away from his from his own line. Alec, in that first test, you rightly went along with Australia. Have you seen any reason to change your mind? Well, I think there'll be a, bit, a little bit of a difference here because I think the Great Britain pride's at stake, and rightly so. It was a miserable performance in the first test, and I think the lads will say, well, come on, we can do better than this. And I think uh, the game will be in uh, the balance until very close to the end. I still fancy Australia, but... Uh, not with a lot. And John Holmes, a good kick into touch as Australia facing a slight breeze and playing into the sun. John Holmes. Oh, and well, that Jeff Grayson certainly shifted that Australian forward. The new captain this afternoon, Jeff Grayson at number eight. Wayne Heron. Ken Kelly, it's Warrington number seven, brought in for his craft and his agility. Oh, good long ball. Stevenson looking for an opening, but well taken by Australia, Mal Meninga. Great Britain certainly giving this ball more room in this second test. One of the lessons that they should have learned was that we can't go down the middle with forward just barging. We've got to get this ball out wide, and here we are trying to do it. Well, that was a, a desperate kick from Ken Kelly. Kerry Booster bringing it away. Yes, and referee Mr. Raskinier, he's very, very officious, is this man. He won't have any lying on the, the tackled, tackler at the play of the ball. He had a very good game in the first match, and he certainly kept tempers on an even. Interestingly, Greg Brentnall there electing to kick for touch against this slight breeze rather than looking for two points in these early stages. But it puts Australia well on the attack. Oh, and a good driving run there. Just look at that prop forward, Les Boyd go. We saw some of his driving runs in that first test. And this will be the first test of the commitment of this Great Britain tackling. This is what they've been working on. Peter Sterling, five yards from this Great Britain line. Oh, a good switch move. Oh, and well, that was a good tackle. That's why that number one, Keith Mumby, the Bradford Northern fullback, has been brought in. 
Oh, what another good tackle. Still five yards bobbing about near that Great Britain line. Things looking dangerous. Six tackle coming up. Sterling. Still keeping this ball going. Well, I think already we should have seen in those six tackles a greater commitment from this Great Britain side. Drop Les Boyd there, finding no way through. We look to have stiffened up the tackling a little, Alec. Well, it's nice to see, isn't it? You know, really taking the Australians on because this is what we're going to have to do for the full 80 minutes. But it is encouraging to see Australia being held out with a tremendous amount of pressure early on. And a penalty already for loose arm against hooker John Dalgreen. So this still keeps the pressure on this Great Britain line. Craig Young, ready. Oh, <laughs> Trevor Skerritt, Great Britain number 10, certainly meant to, to tackle there. Three yards from this Great Britain line. Sterling, Price. Oh, and a nice switch movement. But well taken by Ken Kelly, Great Britain number seven. Well, did he read that? Sterling. Australia still holding the trump cards here. And he's lost it. Well, that's a relief. Well taken by Chris Burton. But he's given an offside decision. Well, rather a strange decision, I think, from the referee, Monsieur Rascagnier. A lucky decision for Australia. It looked as if he's signalling for... Yes, he's signalling offside. Well, I think this is not a bad decision, actually. Just watch Jeff Grayson. He touches the ball, and so does Chris Burton. It's a touch decision, but goes to the Australians. And it's Malmeninga, this Australian centre, number three. 35 goals already on tour. Created a record in this country in Test Match Rugby for Australia by kicking eight in the first test. He should put this one away. And he does very, very comfortably. And so, with seven minutes gone, Mal Meninga puts Australia in the lead by two points to nil. Australia, number three, Mal Meninga. And a good kick to touch puts Great Britain on the attack. The first time in that 25-yard area. Good, strong run. Ken Kelly, Bob Eccles. Well, the littlest man, Peter Sterling, brought him down. John Holmes on a lovely white ball. But offside again, I think. Yes, that's the second time he's warned Steve Rogers, and he's telling him, yes, get back, get back. He certainly can't speak a word of English, Mr. Rascanier, but his signals certainly indicate exactly what he means. And it's Keith Mumby to, to kick for goal. Just inside the 25-yard line and to the left of the posts. It's there and the roar of the crowd greets it. And so, with ten minutes gone, Keith Mumby puts Great Britain back on level terms at two points each. Well, that's nice to see, that's nice to see. That's the first time we've had an Australian forward push back. Rod Reddy, oh, Eric Groth. What a lovely tackle again from Keith Mumby. And touch. Well, these Australians are certainly making very little headway, are Well, isn't that nice to see? I'm normally a criticiser of Jeff Dershin. But Les Boyd looked round and said, is that an English forward? And it was, and what a great tackle it was. John Dow 
Green, the Fulham hooker, having difficulty getting his head in there. Well, it's collapsed. I don't think any of these front rows will be, be taking the moment to meet Mother for tea after this match. There's a lot of power there, there's a lot of fire in that, in that scrum. And it's Great Britain ball. David Heron bringing it away. He looks to have plenty of rugby in him, this youngster David Heron, only 24 years of age. Bob Eccles. Ooh. Well, 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 well. I think Ken Kelly stretched out on the floor. And the referee has given an obstruction. Well, I think once again, Great Britain can feel themselves a little aggrieved there. As Brent now takes the kick to touch. And that kick, five yards from the Great Britain line. And the man down as Kelly still receives attention. Phillips, three yards from the line. Sterling. There's Boyd, is he over? Oh, he's pushed back. Again, with solid commitment from Great Britain. I think in the previous test, he would have been over, but not here. Peter Sterling, this is a little live wire, he's in. No. Push back again. Yes. And Monsieur Rascagne is on the spot. Well, this is a tremendous mount. He just dives over. He's a very strong lad, and he, he does well to score here. What a good try that will be, and an important try for Australia. Peter Sterling, the young scrum half there, he did the damage. He weaved and bobbed about on that line, and he pulled the forwards in. He pulled them in to provide that gap for Ray Price to go through. The Malmeninger, a much more difficult kick this time. Way out on the touchline, just inside the 25 yard, he's got a, a fairly stiff breeze coming against him. But he's a very powerful chap. This Thank man. you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Stone, Brisbane policeman. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't like to meet him in a, a dark street at night. And it's a beauty. Oh, well struck. An excellent goal from Malmeninger with 20 minutes gone. Australia going to the lead at seven points to two. Peter Sterling, Rogers. Rogers knocking him on oh, a beautiful ball to Boosted. Well, we certainly can't let that wingman carry Boosted get in his face. Wayne Pierce, ready. Brett Kenny. Well, and look to slight obstruction there with the referee wave play on. Rugby like this, just watch this. Run ready, Meninga inside to go, and he shouldn't be there, but he is. And just watch the ball, you might think he plays centre inside to Peter Sterling. And this lad's got a long way to go, so Drummond's flying after him. But he does well, he holds him off. Just pulling the ball over. What a good try that is. Third goal of the match. And 15 minutes to go in this first half. Australia well in the driving seat by 12 points to two. Les Boyd. These forwards are running now. Big men like Les Boyd. You can't give them a yard. Craig Young. 
Wayne Pierce, oh, just look at the pace and strength of this man, Brett Kenny. And it's still going. Pierce, growth. He's still going. Oh, and he's in. Well, here they are again. The size, the power. There's a combination of everything there. Harry Groves looks to have received a knock as he was going over, but what another try. Well, this again is a quick pair of hands here, and this is a second row forward, believe it or not. Doesn't he do well, this Wayne Pierce? Slips the ball inside to Kenny, turns back outside, and there's a ball never tackled to Ron Reddy, and Pierce again, and Groves, this is all wants to be scored. He knocks Bob Eccles off as though he's a little bit of paper. Ken Kelly clings on, goes over for a good try. It's a high kick, but he's well wide of the mark. Sterling. Well picked up by John Dalgreen. And another penalty. Talking at the ball. Well, this is one again. I'm just watching little Kenny here. I think he's going to say, well, you've had one, I'm having one. Bump. Off you go. And Keith Mumby is electing to kick a goal. Well, the, the crowd don't like him going for goal, but quite honestly, it's very, very early in the game yet, and two points is two points, and it's well worth taking. And he gets it, so... With 30 minutes gone... He pulls Great Britain up to four points and his decisions well justified. Gal Green still going. He's going backwards. Oh! Well, that was a vicious kick from his boy, number 10. There's no excuse whatsoever, and he's off. He's off. Yes, and rightly so. I don't like to see that in rugby. No need for it. He'd already been cautioned. And Australia number 10 there. Dismissed from the field, and rightly so by referee Monsieur Rascagne. And he's accurate. Well, five minutes ago, Keith Mumby may not have taken many kicks for his club this season, but certainly. He's got three out of three already. And at 15 points to six, he edges Great Britain a little back. Craig Young. A lot of responsibility on these Australian forwards now, only five of them. And there's the man with the responsibility, number nine, Max Krillich, slowing the game down there, sucking in these Great Britain forwards. Oh, and a good dummy. Good dummy from Brett Kenny. Ray Price looking to repeat his first half try. But not this time. Oh! <laughs> well, I don't think you could breathe on this pitch without the referee, Mr Rascagne, knowing about it. He saw that very quickly. I think we'll find here that just watch John Dahl Green here. He misses. <laughs> Does he go in? I think the referee might be right here. It's a long kick. It's way out on the touchline. To the right of the post. But if ever there's a powerful kicker playing rugby league in the moment, this is the man with the power to kick such a goal. But not today. And so, with the 40 minutes gone, coming up to half time. At the half time, Australia still retain a commanding lead at 15 points to six. And that huge crowd will be looking for something from Great Britain in the second half. But if we do get something, well, we must expect miracles. If there's a trophy for man of the match during this game, then I'm sure this referee for me would be very well near it. What a fine game is this man from Perpignan having. He's well worth the expense of the trip. He's firm with his decisions, he's on the spot. 
and he gets the second half underway as Lewis has come on the field for the injured wingman Eric Grove for Australia. And so if, if Great Britain are to stop Australia now in this second half, and gaining the 13th consecutive win on this tour, they've got to create a record, pulling back from a deficit which has never been retrieved in Test rugby. Max Krilic, he looks very annoyed there, he's shouting, he's telling his men, get up here, don't leave me on my own. They left him exposed, but nevertheless, he kicked it up, puts them on the attack. Well, what, uh, what are we going to do this half, and this is the very important thing, Great Britain's tactics, we've got to move the ball, we've got to stretch Australia, and we've got to take them on. And I think if we do, we might cause a little bit of a surprise here. Oof! Well, 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 that's the best tackle we've seen so far. And what a cheer from the crowd for David Heron, the lead man, as he dumped number 11, Wayne Pierce to the ground. But here's Malmeninga. Another tackle by the feet, brought him down. Sterling. Craig Young. They certainly run very, very powerfully, these Australian forwards. And there will only be five of them on the field at the moment, but... They still look fit. And the uh, centre, Lewis. Wayne Pierce still keep the ball going. Brett Kenny. They're not afraid to let this ball go through their hands. Rod Reddy. Brent No. Meninga. Well, well, this ball's like a piece of soap to the Australians. They're moving it everywhere. And another offence, yes. Well, surely Great Britain must realise that, that this man is on the spot. There's, there's no beating this Monsieur Rascagnier. The simplest punch from Ken Kelly, spotted immediately under the post, and another easy chance to number three, Malmeninga. Uh, I, think, I think this is a very needless penalty. Just watch Ken Kelly. There's no need for this, and I think he's just... Oh, he definitely has a go, and it's a childless penalty. And once again, Malmeninga to take a simple kick from in front of the posts. Great Britain can't feel aggrieved at this man's refereeing. Concentrates as much on this kick as if it was on the touchline. And rightly so, because he puts it again between the posts. And with three minutes gone in the second half, Malmeninga increases Australia's lead to 17 points to six. Still having a fine game, this Australian number seven. He took over from the original choice, Mortimer, and he's proving it. Well, he's given a penalty. Max Krilic, it, it looked half a trip, it looked somewhat accidental. But I think Max Krilic, the Australian hooker, he'll accept it. And Gary Brentno, this ex-Australian rules player, pulled back for Australia, putting it into touch, keeping them on the attack. There's not a lot wrong with this decision, actually, because he's the actual great bit is, is still in offside position and the stripping. Good decision by the referee. Five yards from the Australian line. Ten minutes gone, Ray Price going for that Great Britain line. Five yards there. How many times does Hooker number nine, Max Krilic, go at the play of the ball? Wayne Pierce. Two yards from the line. Sterling. Oh, and a lovely chip through. Oh, beautifully received by Rogers, but offside decision given. He might well loot round Steve Rogers, but he accepts it. And there's that man again. There's no escaping him. I think this chap must be the maigre of French referees. 
and this is a little grubber kick by Peter Sterling. What's Pete Rogers here? Does he offside, is he? It was a very close decision, but the referee's there. Gration looking for support, but it's not there. Holmes. Good ball to Heron. Henderson Gill beats one man. He, he takes some putting down with this Great Britain wingman. He's a very low centre of gravity. You need to knock him. Oh. It's still going. Oh, well. Well, the referee, unfortunately, had blown his whistle at the, at the second knock on. Great Britain should have received advantage there, but. And it's Australia ball. <laughs> Kerry Bowstead. We haven't seen much of this Australian number two. Very fast lad when he gets going. It looked offside to me, but play on, says the referee. Sterling, Kenny, oh, beautiful anticipation, and he's still going. Oh, and a lovely tackle from Keith Mumby. Into Sterling, Craig Young. These Australians certainly don't run in ones. There's people backing off of them all the time. Oh, good long ball. And he's in, Malmeninga. Well, 14 minutes gone in the second half. That long ball from Wally Lewis out to Malmeninga, showing Great Britain what they should be doing, that Australia is still doing with only 12 men. Well, I've used in a ball like this. Quick hands, one, two, three, Ray Price. And look at this for a ball. It looks like a rocket. Bang, right in his hands. Meninga doesn't miss them. Drummond, uh, forlorn up. Good try. Looking for his fifth goal of the match. Many people didn't expect this man to be even included in the test team, but here he is, the sensation of the tour. It's a high ball. Oh, and it's a beautiful kick. It's... He had the power, it had the accuracy. And with 15 minutes gone, it's that man again, Meninga, pushes Australia further ahead at 22 points to six. Peter Sterling, this is a little live wire, he's in. No. Push back again. Yes. 18 minutes gone. Australia through Ray Price go into the lead. By five points to two. Meninga, growth. Oh, and a beautiful ball. And what a try, what backing up there. Craig Young, Wayne Pearce, oh, just look at the pace and strength of this man, Brett Kenny. And it's still going, Pearce, growth. He's still going, oh, and he's in. These Australians certainly don't run in ones, there's people backing off of them all the time. Oh, good long ball, and he's in, Malmeninga. Wayne Pearce, this is why Australia are possibly bringing their forwards down the middle a little bit more. They want to pull the Great Britain forwards in before letting it out wide. Steve Rogers, oh, look at that. And he knocks off Ken Kelly with ease in front of the line.
Trevor Skerritt. Bob Eccles. Well, at 22 points to six down, why Great Britain are persevering with one forward coming from the acting half back position when your opposition have only got 12 men simply staggers me. Ken Kelly. What a fine job, number 13, Australia, Ray Price, has looked after Kelly this afternoon. David Heron, and the sixth tackle coming up. Kelly, Stevenson, and Great Britain are going backwards. Oh! 20 minutes to go in the second half, it's Australia back in possession. Kenny. There's that number nine for Australia, Krillich again. When we've had a spell of the ball moving about, he slows it down, he allows the side to get back into their positions, and then they move it. But not like that, I'm afraid, Peter Sterling. Kenny Booster, Australia number two, is lucky to get hold of that. Rod Reddy. the sixth tackle and substitute number 14 John Woods from Lee played in the first test coming on for John Holmes at number six Ken Kelly ferreting for the ball looking for the ball and he's got it Oh. Number 13, Ray Price, into every tackle. Bob Eccles, well, many hoped this man would pick up a try. He scored in his last nine consecutive matches, but time's ticking away for him here. Oh. And literally, it's like men and boys, Australia can pick them up at will. Peter Sterling, Craig Young. He's not a very spectacular player, this young Gallic, but he, he gets through a lot of work. But it's very nice to see that there's always a man in support, and our lads really are standing back ball watching now because the Australians are running at will and giving us a lesson in football backing up and how to play rugby league, which is a dreadful thing to say. Three yards from this Great Britain line. Malmeninga. Sterling, Reddy, oh, a nice sleight of hand from Reddy. Oh, well, I think he'd rock it ready all the way from Queensland, Rockhampton, did one trip too many there. Chris Burton. Des Drummond, Great Britain, number two, hardly had a chance this afternoon. David Heron, I think this boy can be well pleased with his test performance at number 13. He's worked hard, he's tried to create the gaps. John Woods, and the sixth tackle. Well, Great Britain will be hoping that substitute John Woods can provide that spark that's necessary, but he's certainly got a Herculean task on his hands now. And Great Britain are fairly mopping up these scrums at the moment with Australia only having five men. Trevor Skerritt. 
Travis get it looking for the support, but no support forthcoming. Bob Eccles. Gratian, Kelly, Heron. But these Australians move up so very, very quickly into the tackle. There's no way through. And really, Great Britain are going round and round in circles. <laughs> Get back, says John Dalgreen. A kick from Kelly. Oh, well taken by Gary Brendel. And well tackled by Henderson Gill. A good piece of rugby there on both sides. 15 minutes to go in this half. And that man, number 13, Mr. Perpetual Motion, they call him in Australia. Seven rugby union caps, 18 rugby league caps. How well he's led forwards like Craig Young and Pierce this afternoon. I make it now that this is the first time Australia has been in their own half for 12 minutes, which tells you how well they're playing. And they're running with the ball, it looks as though they got a bit annoyed about it. They want to get back in this great bit and half, but how well are they playing? Good long ball to Sterling. Oh, that was loose. And well in. Well in from number 11, Bob Eccles, Great Britain. behind him but Wayne Pierce has him with a copybook tackle around the legs <laughs> David Heron oh and there's that man Pierce again number 11 what a fine career at 21 years of age this man has in front of him Kelly John Woods. We're coming back down the middle when we should be going out wide. Oh, Meninga pushes him off with contempt. And another one. Brett Kenny. Well, Meninga brought his side out of defence there, contemptuously pushing off Great Britain tacklers. It's actually becoming farcical to tackle him because no way should a lad like Meninga be allowed to run from deep in his own half and set Australia on the attack with Reddy. Boosted. Boosted. Oh, this is marvellous rugby. Wayne Pierce, Lewis, Brendel, Ray Price. Oh, this is unstoppable. The crowd are roaring, the crowd are cheering. Just look at that appreciation. And after the spectacular, there's the orthodox, there's the plodder, Max Krillich. He plucked the forwards in again, slow it down and then set it up. Craig Young. Rogers, Sterling, Lewis. Forward pass and a bad pass. And well, Mike Malmeninga, look at him. You cannot believe and this. And we have side. Ray, Ray Brown coming on for number 12, Rod Reddy, in Australia. You cannot believe that this side was actually criticised in Australia for not being good enough. Now, the standard of rugby must be really high over in that country. And yet another ball to to Great Britain. When we think that, that Great Britain are monopolising these scrums by 3-1 to one possession and that Australia scored 22 points, it certainly says something about our attack. Many people have said, can we beat Australia in these test series? No one, in fact, in the in test series has scored a try against them in the last five, so 
I think now it's going to be who's going to score a try. Well, Ken Kelly, great bit number seven. He's worked hard to get going, but quite honestly, Peter Sterling has had far greater speed round that scrum. And the sixth tackle. And Ray Brown, the Australian substitute, moving up number 15, moving up to the prop. Although he's a hooker, he has played uh, prop forward for his club in Australia. Ten minutes to go in this second half. Australia must be hoping for a little bit more possession from these scrums. They're losing. And Great Britain bringing on another substitute, Rathbone for number 12, Chris Burton. Australia in possession, Max Krillich. 15 yards from this Great Britain line. They've been on the attack for virtually the whole of this half. Oh, that nice dummy there from Lewis. Australia at the moment just lacking that extra man, that 13th man to make the overlap. Wayne Pierce. This is why Australia are possibly bringing their forwards down the middle a little bit more. They want to pull the Great Britain forwards in before letting it out wide. Steve Rogers, oh, look at that. And he knocks off Ken Kelly with ease in front of the line. And with 31 minutes gone in the second half, yet another try from Steve Rogers, pushes Australia further in the lead, 25 points to six. Well, it's becoming with nonchalant ease now. Just look at this, a substitution, Ray Brown holds the ball, but just look at it for pathetic tackling. Knocks Ken Kelly off. Knocks Mike Smith off, and he's very lucky in the end to put the ball down. It was a late tackle, but a good try. Steve Rogers, uh, one of the highest paid rugby league players in the world. This man just signed a contract with St George Club in Sydney on a contract of $50,000 a year. And another attempt from Al Meninga. Already. Five goals in his pocket, looking for his six now. On the 25-yard line, to the right of the posts. He kicked eight goals in the first test at Hull Boothbury Park, creating a record for himself by an Australian in a test match in this country. And he's well on the way to beating his own record. It's struck through, straight through the posts. And that's his number six. Seven minutes to go. Seven minutes to go in the second half. Australia cruising into this game. They look well to have this Dominion Insurance Test Series in their pockets. Kerry Boosted. shirt there of number 15 Alan Rathbone the substitute and this Craig Young this prop forward gets to a lot of work he's not as spectacular as the other players but he does the solid graft he brings the ball away Ray Brown the Australian number 15 eager to get into test match rugby Sterling, Wayne Pierce, Price again, Brett Kenny, oh, an unfortunate drop there from number one, Gary Brentnell, and, and a further scrum. Number 15, Alan Rathbone, for number 12, Chris Burton. Great 
Great Britain still with a 6-5 pack advantage there in, in terms of men. And they're certainly winning these scrums. It's 8-2 now, and there's the ninth one. Keith Mumby. Well, I think the way these tries have been coming for Keith, he's been a, a bit like a lollipop man at Brands Hatch at the back there. And Alan Rathbone gets his first touch of the ball. Dal Green. Five minutes to go, Ken Kelly looking for a gap, but sadly coming back inside. Jeff Gratian. And this Great Britain pack certainly was increased for speed, but we still haven't got the speed to match these Australians. Eccles, a nice chip through. But well covered by 13 Ray Price. This man is everywhere. We've commented how this man acts as a sweeper behind the Australian line. And although he may be injured at the moment, he, that's his position for. He's picking up those loose balls along the floor. This just shows a little chip, but just watch Ray Price hit it. Bob Eccles goes in 50-50 ball, but just watch Ray Price does. He, after the ball goes, he's not missed it, and he's still after it, after taking a very heavy knock. And still Australia's ball. Four minutes to go in this second half. Australia still leading by 27 points to six, knowing that they're going to take back the test ashes. <laughs> Kerry Brewstead says, look, I don't want any bother. There's only four minutes to go, lads. Let's get in that bath. side one of the pleasing features of this referee he keeps the game open he keeps the players away from each other and what a what a marvelous match series is this man having he's saying look come on lads spectators have paid the money let's get this game going minutes to go Australia still on the attack Max Krilic looking for the ball he wants to bring these speedy forwards back into action and he does Craig Young oh good ball to Pierce just look at the power of that man Frank Farrington, the manager, said to me he wanted to buy some boxing bags to increase the body strength, but I don't think he needs them with this character. Young, Price. Australia, no. They can throw this ball about anywhere now. It doesn't matter. Time's ticking away. They're looking for more points. 15 yards from the Great Britain line. Oh, Ray Brown, it's a bit like basketball at the moment. Craig Young, Max Krillich. Well, that should be another six tackles, and the referee has indicated so. So it's Australia still on the attack, six more tackles. Five yards from the line, and that man, Ray Price, he scored a try in the first test, he scored one in the first half, and he wants another. Oh, Gary Brendel coming in the line well. One of the features this afternoon has been the attacking flair of that fullback, Gary Brendel, coming in the line. Great Britain defence holding out in these closing stages. Rogers, Price. Oh, here he is again. And a lovely try. No, he's disallowed it. He's not given it. Well, well done, John Dal Green. He put him on his back as he went over the line. I thought it was a try, but the referee again was on the spot and he disallowed it. Oh, 
Well, just look at this rare prize. I think he should have scored this try. Just look at the little jink. John Del Green does well here. Ray Price thinks a little bit cocky, but he turned him over. I thought that was a try. But the ball is still there. It's with Australia, five yards from the Great Britain line. They're determined to get more points. Steve Rogers. Meninga again. Well, what's this big man going to do? He's ploughing for that line, five yards from it. Great Britain now, desperate tackling in these late stages. Wally Lewis, Meninga. Oh, well, I think that's the first mistake Mal Meninga's made all afternoon. And that loose ball was gratefully taken with 40 minutes gone by Great Britain. But 27 points to six. Great Britain must know that the Ashes have gone. There's very little we can do to retrieve them. And Australia are cruising on to the 13th successive victory. And there's the final hooter. And my word, in winning the second Dominion Insurance Test, 27 points to six. Australia have now played 160 minutes of test rugby. They've scored 13 tries, five in this one, eight in the previous test, and Great Britain still haven't crossed their line. And Craig Young, that number eight there, my word, what a, what a fine performance he's had. He probably knows to himself Australia's sixth consecutive test win against Great Britain. That equals their record, and they'll soon be going for another one in the next test. Australia, 27 points to six, have shown themselves convincing winners again here at Central Park, Wigan.